welcome to episode 121 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 18th of June. So welcome everybody, I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week. Um, I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. So today I have some knitting, a little bit of sewing, an Ask Me Anything question from the Ask Me Anything thread in the Ravelry group. I have um, some confessions. It wouldn't be the podcast without some confessions, would it? That's my excuse. <laughs> and I have some information on my shop update this Friday at 7pm. So you can find me on Instagram, Ravelry and Facebook as Craft House Magic. And I have my own website, crafthousemagic.co.uk, where you can find my online shop where I sell my hand-dyed yarn, handmade project bags, stitch markers, higher, higher knitting needles and also fabrics as well. Um, you can also find the show notes on the website um, if you look on the list on the left hand side of the page there is a tab that says show notes and blog you can find it there but you can also find the show notes in the description box just down below there if you need to find links to anything if I haven't popped the link to something just drop me a message in the um, comments down below so we've had the what a lot of pot of cal and it's come to an end and I did explain that last week but I have prizes to show you so now um becky from the back to blighty podcast has drawn the winners on her podcast and i will leave a link um to the episode down below so you can uh, make sure you watch it because you could be a winner <laughs> so basically if you've been called out on becky's podcast if you drop her a message uh, a private message on ravelry you can give her your postal address so that either her or myself uh, will be able to get a prize out to you so i have finished the prizes that i've um, made up for you guys so i've got two marondas map uh, bags that i've made up ready for you um, and they've both got a little um free motion stitched on the back with craft house magic and a little lightning bolt because it's harry potter of course and there um i've Fussy cut some fabric, the Marauders map fabric for the front and it's a small size bag with a couple of nice large pockets on the inside there and a drawstring and before you ask guys um, I'm not selling these in my shop because um, I don't want to infringe copyright by using um, fabric that still has copyright on it you can't sell it for some reason um, it may not apply to this fabric in particular but I'm not risking it <laughs> But there we go, Those, these two will be the prizes from me um, to two separate people and like I said Becky has drawn the winners on her latest podcast. Um, and that was so much fun thank you so much to everybody who joined in especially Becky thank you so much for doing a collaboration and I look forward to doing something with Becky next year so watch out for that <laughs> so you still have plenty of time to join in so do come and join us there is just a discussion thread so do get your finished objects in there as well because the more posts you put in there the more likely you are to win because I'm going to be drawing prizes from a thread at the end so we've got the spring shawl along but we also have the summer sock along which has recently started and um, that runs right until the end of August so you have plenty of time to join in you can do any sock pattern at all um, it can be shorties or longer socks um, just make sure that you come and chat what you're making and just have fun really again I'm not doing a finished objects thread if you'd like to come and chat in the discussion thread and put your finished objects in there as well I'll be drawing for prizes at the end of the make along um, I'm always quite open to sort of crochet or knitting so it's not just a knit along it's a make along it can be knitting or crocheted um, so do come and join in so that's the make along sorted let's get on with the knitting so knitting I have a finished object <laughs> I have finished my socks that I was knitting um, these are for Adam and they're in Star Trek theme so the yarn is from Ducky Darlings and it's the Make It So uh, mini set and there was five different colours of minis red, like a yellowy colour, a blue um, a sort of white and also uh, black as well and they've all got little Donegal neps in um, and I used my set to make some socks um, and what I did is I did um, 
I did the cuff in red and then I switched to the black and I did two rows of black and I did ten rows of the, the red, two rows of the black in the rib as well and then I switched to the yellow and then for most of these thicker stripes I did twelve rows of stitches and for the black stripes I did two rows of stitches um, to get this effect. I did the heels and the toes in the black colourway and I did actually run out, if you look really closely you can see that I used a different black there for about two rows at the end so if you're going to do the same as me <laughs> I suggest that um, you do the two rows of black here and then actually do like a the yellow which would be the next colour that I did in the order here and do the yellow toes instead just to make sure you don't play the yarn chicken <laughs> of course it does depend on how big your socks are but these I knitted for Adam and I think his foot is about ten and a half inches long um, so if you have uh, a foot that sort of size you perhaps want to um, do a different colour toe really uh, but it's just because I did so many two row stripes all the way down so that's my pair finished he is very pleased he can't wait to wear them he's a bit disappointed that I wouldn't let him have them straight away I had to show them on the podcast um, and also he can't wear them yet because it's way too warm that would just be silly wouldn't it <laughs> anyway right that's my first knitted thing to show you I will when I put my um when I put these on my Ravelry page I'll put a rundown of exactly what I did um in terms of how many rows of which colour I did um just so that you can you can copy it if you'd like to so there we go I have one um work in progress I've been relatively monogamous this week with my knitting and I've been knitting on my Gwanwin cardigan so this pattern is by Verena Kors I think that's right um, I have a printout here which has a photo but it's a bit rubbish but hopefully I'll remember to put a colour picture over the top of that so you can see a little bit better but that's Verena Cause, and I'll just show you the spelling um, so that you can find it on Ravelry and of course I will leave a link in the down bar or the description bar whatever you call it and this is how I've got on so far so I think when I last showed you I'd sort of come to about here so I've done quite a bit it's got some beautiful cabled lace there um, and it's supposed to be a jumper but I am converting it into a cardigan so I have got a section on the front where I have left a gap where I'm going to steek it so I'm going to cut it and add some um, plackets down the front for buttons and you can see that I've got my stitches on some cables there ready to do the sleeves and I'm quite a way down the body I think I've done nine inches um, and I'm not doing it quite as long as the pattern said because I'm short <laughs> but I've still got quite a few inches to go on that um, I'm loving this pattern though I just can't stop looking at that cable lace beautiful um, so the yarn that I'm knitting it in is a DK weight yarn and it's a merino and nylon mix and the colour weight is purple haze in my own hand dyed yarn um, what I am actually doing is because I know that I'm going to be cutting um, a steek at the front of the garment where I've left a gap I'm actually alternating skeins up the centre of that gap so when I cut it you won't see um, where I've carried the yarn at all rather than just doing um, a helical uh, transition where it would move um, because it's going to be cut anyway I don't mind just doing them in one position so that's what I'm doing with that one um, it took me a little bit of calculating to change it to a cardigan just because of the slightly unusual way the pattern's written but I've managed to work it out I think hopefully this top bit is a provisional cast on so it won't be in a pink colour once I've finished it there's an additional bit of knitting that I need to do on there and I haven't quite decided yet whether I'm going to do three quarter length sleeves or full length sleeves for this one the pattern actually has full length sleeves but I do quite like three quarters but then it is a relatively thick cardigan so I don't know I haven't decided what I might do actually is when I've knitted a bit more of the body I'll put um, the stitches on scrap yarn and just try it on to see how I feel about um, the rest of the garment before I knit the sleeves so there we go that's my work in progress <laughs> so 
I haven't been working on anything else knitting wise. I don't know where the week's gone. Right, so that is my knitting for today. Um, but I do have some sewing to show. So I've been continuing to work on my sewing case um, that I showed you last week and this is a lovely pattern um, by Emma from Vintage Sewing Box and it's basically a lovely little case to keep all your um, stitchy things inside. So since last week I've added a cute little hexagon motif to the inside there i think the pattern um has got it further up i decided to lower it a little bit and do some stitching around the outside so that's that bit um i'd done this one last week i think i already showed you that one um but i've actually completed um a little needle case which i'll show you in a minute um but i've also attached some little hexagons to the back so these are three quarter inch hexagons um and i've done some stitching around the outside as suggested by emma as well so i'm almost finished i haven't done a closure yet but i haven't quite decided what i'm going to do i've got a little cushion i showed you last week tucked away inside the pocket there <laughs> so um needle case that fits nice inside um, the sewing case as well but let me show you this needle case a little bit closer up so it's got some hexagons on the front um, and then inside there's pages of felt which I've just done some blanket stitches round um, to put some needles in and then I've put some hexagons on the back as well because that's so it's a lovely fun little project to make um, and I've got my needles I've just pulled out of there to make it look a bit less messy. <laughs> when I put them in there with the thread hanging off, it doesn't look quite as neat, does it? Oh dear. Anyway, that's um, that goes inside my little sewing case, which I think is absolutely adorable. Just inside there. And I've got all the things I need um, to make my little um, English paper piecing. Like I said, I haven't finished the closure just yet, but I haven't quite decided whether I'm actually going to make a bag for it to fit in that's in a hexagon shape yet. Um, I will see. I'll see what I feel next week. <laughs> so I'm afraid I don't feel as if I've got a lot of makes to show you, really. The hexagons take me quite a long time to finish. <laughs> So I've got a question from the Ask Me Anything thread now. So I had a couple of people um, asking me on the um, Ravelry group thread but also by email whether I'd show them exactly what I did to make this cushion. So it's a lovely pattern um, by Sandra Paul to make these little squares and it's called the Battingberg pattern and it's designed to be a big blanket but I decided to do a cushion cover instead. Now I made a giant triangle um, and just folded it over and then stitched it and added some buttons but I'm going to explain in a little bit more detail exactly what I did. So the cushion I had um, needed about six by six squares um, to cover the front of the cushion. So I've made a little template so I can explain it a bit better. So basically this is the size of my cushion I needed to cover and I made it very slightly smaller so that it wouldn't be too baggy on my cushion to go inside. And then I kept on adding squares until there was a giant triangle shape and that um, each side was sort of larger so we could overlap it um, so this edge here is six by six um, and I've got an extra six squares along here and an extra six squares along here um, to make it big enough to fold over so when you fold this square over it covers the central row of squares going diagonally across and then when you fold this other one over that f covers that central line of squares again if that makes sense so that you've got um, the ability to then add buttons um, to secure this overlap in place and then I've used a um, 
double crochet round the edges here to secure that in place um, so first of all I folded one corner over and then just stitched down that side and down that side and then I folded this over and then I stitched this one square down and then up this side here so that you could then open that up to put your cushion inside and I'm hoping that's a better explanation so that people can understand it but I've basically got 12 squares here by 12 and then just filled in um, a diagonal line of squares if that makes sense of course what you'd need to do is make sure that your initial patch of squares here is big enough to fit, fit your cushion and then do double the length and do a diagonal line between if that makes sense so hopefully that answers your question guys so that's my ask me anything question but I have a couple of <laughs> so previously I bought some hexaforms from a company called Ashmead Designs and, and they have these little pre-cut um, hexagons that you don't have to take out of your work so that you can leave them in. I don't know if I'd necessarily use these for quilts and things but for projects like my sewing case um, that I showed you just now I think it's really nice to not have to take things out, especially when they're quite small hexagons. And it also gives the hexagons a little bit of poofiness. They stick out a little bit more. So for these back ones, I used my new hexagons that I bought. So I bought some three quarter inch ones, same as the smaller ones. I'd got quarter inch ones before. And I also picked up um, some half inch hexagons as well. And they're made of some sort of, sort of like a fabric material um, that you can then just sew into your project and don't have to take it out. And you can see how this, it just, it just gives it a little bit of, um, texture it makes the hexagons stick out slightly um, when you applique it onto something which I think is really good so these are the two that I bought this time <laughs> the Ashmead Designs website is a very simple website to follow so I'll leave a link to these in the down bar so you can get hold of some of these yourself so I've now got three sizes <laughs> um, but there we go that's my naughty confessions so last of all, I just have my shop update. So tomorrow, the 19th of June at 7 p.m. GMT, I will have a shop update and I will have lots of um, high, high knitting needles and accessories back in stock. Um, there are a couple of things that I couldn't get hold of at the high, high warehouse, um, but most of it is restocked. So do check those out. And I will also be stocking some kits for some of the shawls that I've made out of my own hand dyed yarns. So first of all, I'll have kits for the Starflake, whoops, <laughs> for the Starflake shawl. And this one is knitted out of two of my colourways. And this is Nobody Does It Better. And this one is Ordinary World. And this takes two skeins of each colour. But um, all you'll have to do is click um, and put the one thing in your basket for these kits. Uh, of course, it doesn't include the patterns themselves, um, but I just thought I'd make them available so that you didn't have to um, go searching through all my colourways to find out which I used. This one is a right around the corner shawl. Um, this pattern is by Lisa Haynes. And the two yarns that I've used here are Here Comes the Rain Again, and this one here is You Can't Hurry Love. And that just requires one skein of each. So that kit will just be two skeins of yarn. I have the same pattern again. Um, and this one is two different colourways, obviously. <laughs> um, this one is Because the Night. And this colour here is Running Up That Hill. And again, that's one skein of each. This one is the Hohi Locatelli pattern, the Pure Joy Shawl. And these two colourways are Tell It To My Heart and Love Shack. Um, and that's just one skein each. I did find that I personally um, ran out of this yarn. So I will have a second option um, to have an extra 20 gram mini skein of just this colour so that you don't ever play yarn chicken. But I have spoken to a few people that have knitted it and not everybody has run out. Um, so it's up to you whether you purchase that extra 20 gram skein or not. Um, otherwise, it's just one skein of each. So this one is the Passaggiata um, by Janina Callio. And these two colourways are Living on a Prayer, which is the dark grey, and the sort of turquoisey blue-green is 
Love is a Battlefield. So that's just one skein of each for that one. And last of all, I've already got up the kits um, for this one. And this is the Stephen West's Jigsaw Puzzle. Um, and that takes one skein each of eight colours. I did have some left of some of these, but I just thought it's better to have the 100 gram skeins because then you can choose which square you're going to do whatever colour you'd like as well. And there was plenty to make these large tassels as well. Um, so this is the Jigsaw Puzzle. And these colourways, there's eight of them <laughs> is come on Eileen holding out for a hero nothing's gonna stop us now smells like teen spirit lucky star tell it to my heart and rock me Amadeus there but they if you just go to the the listing that it just is all the yarns all together so you don't actually need to know what the colorways are uh, again the pattern is not included but it does give you all the yarn that you need to complete the pattern according to the pattern instructions so there we are so that's all the things that will be going in my shop update this week but look out next week for some new things too so thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and I'll see you in the next episode bye